Hi and welcome to this video called what is this process doing? So sometimes we need to understand at least in broad strokes what a particular process is doing. So it's important to understand that a process is just a management object which means that it doesn't really do anything. The entities that really do something are threads. So we want to look at threads to get a sense of what a particular process is doing because really it boils down to what the threads within this process are doing. And so we want to look at call stacks. And the way to do that is to use various tools such as Process Explorer or Process Hacker. And the other option is to use yet another tool which is a debugger which we can use from user mode or kernel mode. Now it's important to have symbols configured correctly Otherwise, you won't be able to see much detail, or at least not correct details, as far as Microsoft binaries are concerned. And because Microsoft's pub public symbols are available using their symbol server, we can connect to that. And the best way of doing that is by defining the anti-symbol path environment variable with the initial underscore, and point it to this particular string where the middle part here between these two asterisks is some local path you might want to use for caching symbols so we don't have to go over to the internet every time we need symbols for a particular module and then the URL here is the, exactly the one that you need to use in order to point to the Microsoft symbol server. And using this environment variable has several advantages one of which is that multiple tools use or search for this environment variable when they want to access symbols. It's not just a debugger or process explorer, it's also Visual Studio, process monitor and other tools. So it's a good thing to do that just once and simply forget about that. So let's see a few examples of how we can leverage these tools to see what threads are actually doing. So first let's open process explorer. With Process Explorer, we can see for every process the list of threads for this process by using the Threads tab here at the bottom, or we can double click the particular process of interest, and then we can see there's a Threads tab here which we can look at as well. This is perhaps the, a bit more convenient in some cases, but the properties of the thread are limited and you can't sort by all possible properties. Instead, you can use this view to sort with various properties. So let's take an example, something like uh, say Explorer, which is a very big process in the sense that it has usually many threads. And you can see there are many threads here within Explorer. Uh, in fact, we can add a column here by right clicking to see the number of threads by going to process performance and then looking at number of threads. In fact, it's already shown simply being scrolled out of view perhaps. So let's look for that, here it goes. So you can see there are 34 threads in this Explorer instance. In this one, in fact, there are many more, 178 threads in this particular Explorer instance. So we see these threads that have uh, certain properties. I won't go over, over these properties in this video, but you can see the state of the threads and it seems to be that all of them are waiting, but that's a bit misleading because you can see the CPU time is not really zero. You can see the cycles being changed for some threads. So there is some activity there, but every time Process Explorer examines the thread states, then they're more likely than not to be in the waiting state because they're running not a lot between the refresh that uh, refresh cycles that Process Explorer uses, which is by default once per second. So how can you see what a particular thread is doing? So one way is to double click or click the stack button and we'll get the call stack of the thread in question. And the nice thing is that if you run Process Explorer with admin privileges, it installs its driver and that driver allows it to get the call stack in user space and kernel space, not just user space. So you can see here that this is the bottom of the stack and always going to start with these two functions, RTL user thread start and then base thread init func, you can see this one is from NTDLL and this one is from kernel 32 and you notice the format, it's going to be the same one used throughout Process Explorer and also other tools use that such as WinDebug Debugger. So we have the module name, an exclamation mark and then the symbol name, usually a function name, a C function or a C++ function and an optional offset which means we're not at the beginning of the function but in this case 21 hex bytes forward within the function. 
So this function calls this function that calls this function. This particular one, TPP worker thread, is used by the thread pool uh, or thread pool implementation in Windows. TPP is short for thread pool private. It's a private function from the thread pool, essentially waiting for work. You can see here the system call is anti wait for work via worker factory. Worker factory is the kernel object that manages thread pools. That's the official name internally. This is still in user mode, but then you can see frame 11 here is in kernel mode now because the module name is ntoskernel.exe, which is the kernel. So you can see here the actual system call is anti wait for work via worker factory, the same name exactly as we see here in anti DLL. In fact, system calls always have the same prototypes. It's just that in NTDLL is the way to make the transition to the kernel. On the kernel side of things, it's the actual implementation. So this is waiting for something. We can see there's a K wait for single object here, which is a documented function in the Windows driver kit that indicates that this thread is waiting for work. Um, what about symbols, really? I didn't mention that. So here goes. We go to options and configure symbols. If you have configured the anti-symbol path environment variable correctly as described previously, you'll see that the symbol path is going to be showing that information automatically without you having to configure anything. However, there is one little trick you have to use in Process Explorer to see proper symbols, and this is to point to dbg help that is provided by the debugging tools for Windows, which in, on my machine is installed in this directory. This is critical to get correct symbol information. By default, it is going to show you dbg help coming from the system32 directory. And you might be thinking that this is just perhaps a newer version of dbg help.dll, but this is not really the case. The reason you have to point to this directory in the WinDebug or Debugging Tools for Windows uh, installation is that, in fact, there's another DLL that is needed for symbols called simsrv.dll. And this has to be placed beside or in the same directory as dbg help. And unfortunately, that file, that DLL, is not part of Windows. It's only part of the debugging tools for Windows. So it's not really about the dbg help DLL explicitly. It's about its friend, simsrv.dll. So that's something you have to do manually. It's not happening automatically right now in Process Explorer. So this is critical to do. And once you do that, of course, once, you don't have to meddle with that again in Process Explorer. So this is why I see proper symbols. Let's look at another example. Here's a, a tool called CPU Stress, which is part of the System Tunnels tools. This is a tool I've written a few years back. This is a slightly newer version from a GitHub repositories, but its basic uh, usage is to, well, burn CPU cycles. It's not a very lofty goal, but still something that might be uh, useful, and it is useful in certain cases. Anyway, let's find this process called CPU stress. Um, so let's see. We have CPU stress here somewhere. Here it goes. So CPU stress, you'll notice it has, um, well, it has a few threads. And you can see that one thread is running from time to time. And that's because this thread is active with a low activity. If I increase its activity to medium, it will be roughly 50% of the time in the running state. Otherwise, if I uh, change that even more, let's say 100% activity, it enters an infinite loop. So it's always going to be running. It's always going to be in the running state, no more waiting. And in this case as well, we can definitely go ahead and double click or press the stack button to see exactly what this thread is doing. So in this case, you can see that for CPU stress, we don't have symbols. CPU stress is not provided with symbols. I'm not, I, I haven't provided these symbols to Process Explorer. I didn't appoint the symbol server or, or anything like that because we don't have those symbols in the Microsoft symbol server anyway. And I didn't point to my local version of the, of the symbols. So you can see here there's an executable name with a very large offset. When you see a very large offset, which is, I would say, a rule of thumb is four hex digits or more, it means there are no symbols for this module. And this is just the way it is. There's nothing you can do about it because there are just no symbols and that is that. But then the call stack continues correctly with wait for single object EX here in kernel base, which calls NTDLL with anti wait for single object, that is the system call, and then we are back here again on the kernel side of things. So you can try that with any executable really, but in some cases you will find no symbols. 
Here's another example. Here's some NVIDIA application. NVIDIA doesn't provide their symbols, at least not that I'm aware of. And again, if we look at one of these threads, we'll find that we have this nvcontainer.exe plus some crazy big offset, which essentially means we have no symbols, we have no idea what specific function is, is being called here in these uh, stack frames. But at some point, uh, we can see that st things are going to Microsoft binaries, so we again regain the ability to see uh, various call stacks and information. And again, we can see this is still in user mode. This is user mode as well. NT user get message is the system call that re is related to get message, the documented Windows API. This thread is waiting for messages in terms of user interface. And that's why behind the, the scenes or in the kernel address space, win32k.sys is the one that tasked with taking care of that. And there is some other wait happening here, but it's coming from win32k.sys, which is also, of course, a kernel component. That's the one that's dealing with all the user interface in Windows. So one way is looking using Process Explorer. We can also utilize a, a debugger. So here's a user mode debugger. Uh, well, win debug, really. I'm going to use attach to process here to attach to something that I'm interested in. So let's say something like uh, Visual Studio, say. I have a Visual Studio uh, running here somewhere. So here's dev VNV. I'm going to select this process here and you can attach. And by the way, if you try to attach to something slightly sensitive like certain SVC host processes or Explorer, that might be problematic because your UI might freeze because Explorer sometimes is required. And so you can also click here this button to attach not, in, not invasively. With non-invasive attach, you don't really break into the target process, but you can still see what's going on. Uh, at least to some extent. Let me just attach normally here. And when you attach normally, we get a breakpoint immediately. And so all the threads here are not moving forward. And this is in contrast to Process Explorer where threads are continually potentially running. So every time we capture a snapshot of the call stack, this is just a snapshot. Things could change one microsecond later. But in this case, we're definitely not uh, changing anything and nothing has been is going to happen in this process unless unless we let it go So you can see there are many threads in Visual Studio unfortunately In fact, we can use the tilt command to list all these threads and there are many of those and, and Then if you want to look at a call stack, we can use the K command for a particular thread uh, of interest So say something like this like tilde zero that uh, looks at thread zero and the call stack for that thread so you can see the call stack for this thread. And again, you can see this is the bottom of the stack. This is the next function. And then that's the, uh, the real function that the developer has provided, which in fact is uh, for this particular first thread in the process. It's coming from the C runtime. And here's the win main function for Visual Studio. We do have some symbols for Visual Studio. So we can see here that there is a run function, a C++ function uh, in this C dev and app ID class and we're somewhere within this function. Although the offset is fairly big, I still think we have a good symbols to verify. We can go ahead and look at the loaded modules and with the loaded modules, we can uh, get some information as to the state of symbols. So if we're talking about a module here, let's go, let's go back to the call stack, the module name that we're interested here is, well, you can see there are many modules. It's MSENV, uh, sorry, DevENV, that's the one. So here's a DevENV, let's just uh, find it here. In fact, it's also possible to simply use a different version of the LM command to, uh, to hone in on a particular module. You can see PDB symbols, meaning there are symbols, and here's the location where they're actually being uh, stored locally after being retrieved from the internet. So we've seen what we have uh, in this particular call stack. With this same idea, we can grab any call stack and just examine what's going on there. So you can see this is a thread pool thread, and of course, because this is a .NET process, we can do even better by loading the SOS extension, looking at threads from a managed perspective, not just a native perspective. But that's something we'll do in a different video, perhaps. Another option to look at call stacks uh, is using a kernel debugger. Let me launch a kernel debugger here. So I'm going to launch WinDebug Elevated, another instance, and connect to my local debugging session here. So here goes. And then we can definitely focus on a process of interest. So in this case, we can again select anything we want, but just for fun, let's, uh, let's select something uh, 
that perhaps might be interesting. Something like, uh, well, let's go with CPU stress. I'm not sure it is interesting, but let, let's start with that. So we have the process ID that we need, which in this case is 91596. So let's go and find this process. So by default, if I don't provide any detail level to list the entire set of threads, and we're able to see the call stack of those threads. By the way, in the user mode debugger case, we can't see kernel stacks. There's just no way to do that because we're limited to whatever we can uh, get from user mode only. So we can see the top of the stack is something from NTDLL in this example, and that is it. There's no way to see NT or kernel. With the kernel debugger, we're able to see everything, at least potentially. And now it's the correct one. So you can see the list of threads here with their call stacks, if the call stacks, uh, if the stacks are in physical memory right now. And you can see the kernel part of these call stacks, but we don't see the user mode part. User mode part seems to be very limited, just showing us a number, but obviously something is missing here. So can we see the user mode part of the stack? And the answer is yes. The only thing we need to do is to tell the kernel debugger that we're interested in this particular process rather than some other process. Because remember, user mode addresses in kernel debugging are not unique. So if I ask as to something that is in this address, the question should be in which process do you mean? And so we have to make that switch. And the way to do that is by using the dot process meta command. So here's the process. I'm going to use the dot process command and switch to this process by using slash p and also slash r to force user mode symbols to be loaded. The other option is to use the dot reload slash user command to do essentially the same thing. So we can do either that or the other, both of them will do the same thing. And then once we perform that switch, now if you look at the process or if you look at a particular thread, we should be able to see the full details of the call stacks, including kernel and user part. So let's see. So here goes, you can see already, perhaps while all these things is scrolling like crazy, is that we have information here about user mode part. Here's the user mode part, and then we get to the kernel. So here's still the user mode part, but then we're on the kernel side of things. NT is the generic name for the kernel module. Same goes for other threads. We start with user mode and we get to kernel frames right here and so on and so forth. So if you want to look at a particular process from a kernel debugging perspective and you are interested in user mode information as well, you have to first point the debugger to the correct process for that to work correctly and also force loading user mode symbols because they're not loaded by default. So here's CPU stress. Again, we don't have the symbols, so we do get something very generic here, but then we have some sleep EX here. Anti-delay execution is the actual system call for the sleep or sleep EX uh, user mode APIs. And then we're on the kernel side of things where we have K-delay execution thread, which is in fact the one that's performing the sleep operation, so to speak. So that's the basic idea, and of course you can look at any process uh, that you want using this mechanism. If you are not in local kernel debugging sessions, such as a remote debugging session, then of course the machine will be completely frozen while you're looking at call stacks, and things will not be changing. Here I am in my local kernel debugging session, so, so things are changing uh, while the system is running, but again, that's fine uh, for what we're trying to do here.